Hey guys, how are we doing today? I'm Anita Hori, second generation Pilates instructor, Pilates business coach, and teacher trainer and international workshop presenter. My YouTube videos are specifically aimed for those newer Pilates teachers or business owners who are perhaps needing a little bit of extra support in their Pilates business journey. My 25 years of being in business, 14 of which have been in the Pilates industry, have given me enough experience, knowledge, making mistakes, learning from those mistakes and understanding how to perfect your Pilates businesses, increase your credibility as a Pilates teacher and venture into other forms of uh, income generating activities such as creating workshops, creating uh, retreats and creating specific courses for specific perhaps populations, etc. Today I'm going to be talking about how to market yourself and your business if you are an introvert. So I have put this video together because believe it or not, I have been an introvert and I still am to a certain extent. And in speaking to many of my clients, I realize that many, many of you are too. It is very easy to believe that in today's digital world, being an introvert is actually a disadvantage especially when it comes to running your Pilates business. After all, so many modern marketing platforms such as Facebook and Facebook Lives and videos, Instagram posts and Reels and YouTube videos like this one, and perhaps even public speaking, they all seem to be made for extroverts. But here is the thing. The beauty of marketing is that it can be as individual as you are. So there's no one size fits all marketing plan or tactic. So like I see it like this, when Pilates clients come to see you, you are going to pick out some tools from your specialized toolbox and then you're going to choose that particular tool or exercise or movement that is going to be relevant to their, that particular client's needs. And then perhaps you think, I'm going to work on this piece of equipment because they have this specific requirement, or I'm going to choose this exercise. So all these specific choices are done according to the, the client's requirements. So you don't necessarily need to use all the tools in the box. You don't need to give all the exercises on all the pieces of equipment. You just need to make sure that you tailor make the workout according to what the requirements are and to, to who your niche client is. The same works for marketing. You have a variety of marketing options and platforms to choose from that are going to fit in more with your business, with your client's requirements, with what works for you, with who that client is, and the results you're going to want to achieve for the client. And they obviously have to work well with your skill sets and your personality. If you are excited about this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and don't forget the bell button to be notified every time I upload a video online. Likewise, if you've got any questions or any comments, please place them in the comments below underneath the video. And if you have any friends or anyone that you know that might benefit from this video, please feel free to share so that these guys will also learn a few new tricks. Okay, so let's define the term introvert. So an introvert is characterized by looking inwards. This is someone who tends to be happier in smaller groups and perhaps finding and gaining energy by being on their own. So they don't really like to be out there in out in larger groups. Now this definition doesn't necessarily make you shy. This definition doesn't necessarily say that a shy person is an introvert or vice versa. You can be an introvert, but you can actually overcome your shyness, especially through the years and especially through practice. And this is really what happened to me. Um, and the difference between shyness and being an introvert is that shyness is actually a fear of being judged by other people. The fear that this is as us as human species, we are more concerned about what other people say about us or how they, they can judge us. And that shyness comes out when you are a little bit afraid of 
actually being judged by others or being commented about by others. And th there are processes to be able to overcome that fear. There are processes to overcome your shyness. So don't get the two confused. And then being introverted also has a lot to do with how draining you find social interactions. So introverts spend energy, lots of energy by having social inter interactions and then they gain energy by spending time on their own. So then, as I explained earlier, there's that difference of being shy and being an introvert, where that shyness is more of that fear of the negative judgment or the negative um, comments from others. And, and it is really very, very, very true that it's, it's quite normal to, to be shy in the beginning. And um, yet, being an introvert is, is a longer term process to be able to get out there and gain the confidence to go out and do your public speaking events, things like giving workshops or teaching to larger groups or even um, putting yourself out there online on social media and, and putting your face out there online. So whether you are shy or whether you're an introvert, that's okay because there are specific marketing tactics that will work for you. Now, it's virtually impossible to run a profitable Pilates business without having marketing strategies and without marketing yourself. So when done correctly, marketing is actually having a conversation with your ideal client. It's that having that ideal client avatar that you're having an honest conversation with that you're going to start building that relationship. It does involve spending a decent amount of time in, ho in having conversations. To me, self-care and balance are really important aspects when it comes to marketing my business effectively and also looking after myself. So if you are going to do um, events that involve lots of people or where maybe you are going to be teaching a larger group of people or creating a workshop or even you plan to do a retreat where you have to be the face of your business, right? Then you're going to find that that you need to find your balance by maybe pulling yourself away from these people, giving yourself some time on your own just to focus and just to gather that balance, get the energy right in order for you to be able to be of service to these people. Or for example, if you're planning to go live on Facebook, make sure that you pull yourself away, give yourself some time um, before you go live and get your energy right, rebalance your energy. And another important thing is not to go out there and create more social media interactions and or doing any public speaking events on that same day. That will be completely draining for you. So on that note, here are some tips for you to run amazing marketing programs and creating that self-care that you require. So the first one is to take your time to balance yourself before you go on a Facebook Live. So take that energy and find your balance and find that energy to be able to give that amazing Facebook Live presentation, workshop, or even marketing post that you want to give without getting nervous or getting anxious about it. So it's really key to balance your energy before you go live or record that brilliant video that you want to be posting out there. This is what I have done for a number of years and it really has worked for me. So whenever I have um, a large workshop or when I'm teaching an internet at an international event or when I am creating my teacher training, especially at the very beginning when I don't know the people, um, I feel that I need to set some time for myself, pull myself away from the situation, get my balance right, get my energy right, maybe some, do some meditation, and then it gives me that extra energy to be of service and to give an amazing workshop or to give an amazing program for my clients. Then tip number two is not to spend all day teaching and then going to your marketing activities at the end of the day when you are already exhausted, you're tired, you're low on energy, and then you have to be creative for your Facebook Live or your video or your presentation, whatever that might be. Pull away from that and 
This is going to bring me to tip number three. Now, tip number three is going to be allocating your marketing activities to days where you do not have to teach or you don't have to meet people. And this has been something in my business. I've been doing this in my business for donkey's years, I think since I've actually started my Pilates business 15 year, nearly 15 years ago. Um, it's I've allocated a Friday afternoon. A Friday afternoon was my religious marketing or me time. Or if I didn't have any marketing activities, that's fine. I would have used it for myself. But it was religiously no social interactions, no teaching. In fact, I limited my teaching, especially at the beginning where I was um, low in self-confidence and I felt that I didn't have the right teaching techniques or tools to be able to give great classes. At the beginning, I would perhaps give maybe one class in the morning or two classes in the morning on a Friday, left it at that, had a really long break, had a lovely lunch, enjoyed myself and then went to my market marketing activities in the afternoon and this has worked for me for many many years and I still use that my Fridays in fact now I don't even work on a Friday that's my religious time off and this is something that you need to be religious about that yourself because that really works for you and your psyche and tip number four is going to be tailor your marketing activities to your clients requirements your business requirements and your skills. Of course, you have to take your skills. So if you if you feel that you don't want to be out there doing a live video, then that's fine. There are other ways and I'm gonna be discussing them further on in this video. And tip number five is actually what I've just said about not being on camera. So you don't have to be on camera. If you don't like being on camera, you don't need to do your uh, videos. You don't need to be doing your Facebook lives. You don't need to be teaching workshops online while you're actually in front of the camera. And finding the right marketing strategy for your character, for your personality, for your skills is very, very important for you to deliver the right message to your clients in a way that doesn't create anxiety and tension within you. And then tip number six is going to be avoiding public speaking events until you feel you're absolutely ready to do so. There are so many other things you can do for your business, any other marketing activities that you can do that don't involve public speaking or workshops or presenting at events. Um, until you feel comfortable and you just need to take it one step at a time. But while you are taking it one step at a time, there are other marketing strategies that you can take. Now, here are some ideas on how to market your business while you are an introvert. So idea number one is going to be start with one-to-one -one relationships. So Essentially, that's going to be your private clients. So if you are a newer Pilates teacher and you don't have that confidence, the best way to do so to start that business is going to be by just giving one-to-one -one sessions. And in starting to give these one-to-one -one sessions, you're going to build those relationships and reach out to people who are going to be your ambassadors. And then what's going to happen? You're going to get that word of mouth advertising, right? And these guys, these guys are going to be the ones that are going to stay with you for a long time. So they can become great partners in your business. And then idea number two is about networking events. And this is very important. I really suggest that you, you do go and I encourage you to go to networking events because this is also going to start breaking down that shyness barrier that you might have. So when you go to networking events, the, the first thing that I suggest is to avoid having to interact in the larger group clusters and don't even try to break into those group clusters. It's going to be much harder for you. So look out for those smaller groups with maybe two or three people and see if you can um, engage in conversation with those or better still, go and find somebody who's standing on their own and start up a conversation with them. And then there's another idea of perhaps standing by the coffee stand and passing over the coffee and starting conversation while you're having your coffee or you're passing the coffee. And it's, it's an engaging conversation that perhaps 
will break the ice and get you started and, and communicating and conversing with others. And then another uh, funny, I guess it's a, it's a funny thing that it's mainly for us, us women um, that we tend to be chatterboxes in, in the bathroom. So if you go to these events, you just head over to the bathroom and see if um, there's any other lady that you can perhaps have a, a conversation with, start up a, a stupid conversation. But nonetheless, it could be the start of a, a good relationship. You don't know unless you actually try. I know from my part, Part, I've had amazing conversations with some really powerful women in my business experience and actually I've started conversations and I started and I continue to having great relationships with these ladies so don't underestimate conversations held in bathrooms. Idea number three would be to make use of written word. So it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be out there putting videos of yourself or doing Facebook lives or doing a YouTube video or even presenting at a live event. You know, a lot of introverts prefer to write things down because it gives them the chance to think the process through and to make sure that it's right before they finally publish it and put it out there. And it also takes less social energy from face-to-face -face interactions. And the other thing is that many extroverts actually don't write, don't like writing. And lots of other marketing, uh, ma marketing can be done just through the use of words, things like Facebook posts, um, blogs, email marketing. So you can use the word form of marketing and putting it out there to your clients. And newsletters, for example, are also a very good idea for you to start that relationship with clients to get your brand out there and without having to go out there and put yourself in front of a camera. Idea number four is video marketing. Now guys, there's no way of hiding it. Video marketing is the future of marketing, okay? People love the interaction. People love how um, video marketing puts a more personal feel to your message, to the, what you want to portray to your clients, to your brand essentially. So, there's not, it's not to say that you should be doing your video marketing now. It's very much starting step by step, one small piece at a time. And then when you feel ready, you can start by perhaps recording yourself and just checking your video out and then putting it out there as a, a video, as a video on your website or as a video on your Facebook page or even on YouTube, you don't need to have it live. Going live is that, that next step on, right? And then you can also do things like Doodly. You can use Doodly to create videos where you don't actually have to put your face on the camera. Or you can do presentations, you can teach a workshop using a presentation that you can do on Canva, or you can also do a PowerPoint presentation put it into a video and then post that video online, still giving that workshop, still giving the course, but without you having to show your face. Now, idea number five really is all about doing videos online. And this is really essentially the, the ultimate stage where you will, you'll be able to just press that live button and put yourself out there for the world and with confidence and with bliss that you don't have any worry about how your video is going to turn up. Now, just a little piece of advice here. Don't think that a video has to be absolutely perfect which, before you go out there and upload it or even if, um, if you're on a video on a Facebook Live that everything has to come out perfect. No, experience is just gonna keep teaching you. And you know, just even have a look at, have a look at some of my videos. And even now I still feel like, you know, I have to, there's a lot to improve on, but I never wait for my video to be absolutely perfect because then the message is gonna get lost. The idea is for me to put that message across to my audience and that is the most important thing, that they get the gist of what I'm trying to say and not of how I'm looking or what the background looks like or yeah, there's so many other factors that affect video marketing, but 
just getting yourself out there and putting um, yourself into that process, getting into that process is going to help you. Idea number six is visual communication tools. Now this includes photos or other images that you can post on your social media accounts without having to post videos or photos of yourself. So you could, if you wanted to completely put yourself out of the picture, discuss a particular topic. Say, for example, you're wanting to talk about the benefits of Pilates for seniors. So the ideal situation would be here to have a video of you teaching seniors, right? But if you don't have that confidence or you still feel that being an introvert, you're not ready for that yet. Do these, use these tools, use these photos of uh, seniors. You, there, you can get stock photos from, um, from, from the internet and you can post them on your social media accounts. Then using the written word, you do create your post. So you start talking about what the benefits of Pilates are for seniors, posting a photo of seniors and putting it on your social media accounts. Then there's no photo of you or video of you on site. The next thing, it's really very much focus on your why. Why am I doing this? When people do a lot of marketing, often they think about themselves. Often they think about what am I showing to people? What am I selling? How am I selling my services? It's all about me, me, me. But really and truly, it is not about you. And this is the mistake that I see happening with a lot of my clients. When you are creating your marketing strategies, you have to focus on your client avatar, your perfect Pilates client avatar. And I talk all about that on this particular video over here. Now, when you are creating your marketing strategy, you have to focus on that particular client's needs. So that is your niche market. Think about what am I going to give these guys to make them believe that they have this problem and I am able to sort this problem for them. So then it's going to take the pressure of you having to focus on yourself and how to market yourself and focusing your energy and attention on how to help these people. That's essentially just switching roles. That's all you're doing, just focusing on these guys, focusing on your clients, taking action to make the right marketing decisions. And the next thing is, of course, I have to talk about this, is optimizing your website. So as an introvert, your website is really the face of your business. It is the greatest tool that you can have because it is your face out there to the world, to the world out there. So, you know, you have Google and other search engines that are going to be helping you market your website, market your services to the world out there. And it's just going to start pulling those possible client avatars to your business, again, without you having to go in front of a camera. So if you don't have a website, it's a very important thing to get yourself creating a website. It's important to optimize your website, to optimize the traffic that comes into your website and to, to give the right message to your clients. Now, the final thing is going to be stop comparing yourself with extroverts. You know, give yourself a break. Just because these guys are on their journey doesn't mean that you need to be on it too. We are all different and you just need to be comfortable and reassured that you have your own special skills that you're going to be putting out there and you don't need to be like that extrovert, that, that person who he can say it all and he can do it all because the kind of people they pull to their business are going to be different to the kind of people that you pull to your business. And you have your own superpower. I keep mentioning it in my videos, and I mentioned this in, in quite a lot of my videos, that you, you have to find your superpower. And being an introvert is actually quite a superpower in the written word, for example. And if you feel that you still need a little bit of advice and you, st you still feel that 
you need some support in getting there and overcoming these obstacles, then really work with a coach that can help you in specific specifically which what your needs are so it's not a one size fits all you need to find a coach that works specifically for your needs so there you are guys these are some tips that are going to help you generate a good marketing strategy as introverts now i will send you links to google and canva here below and if you've got any questions or comments please go ahead and post them below this video if you want a coach to help you with your marketing strategies and improve your marketing skills, then by, a, by all means, you can join Anita Hori Academy and you can contact me by just even clicking on my Facebook page and, and messaging me on there or even by just po posting a comment below and I'll be, I'll be very willing to communicating with you there. So within my coaching programs, I make sure that every single person has a specific tailor-made program that is all made according to my client's needs. Now, I offer free a free onboarding session and it's very easy to apply. As I mentioned, either go onto my Facebook page, Anita Hori Academy, or just put your comment below. Now, if you like this video, if you were excited about this video, please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and ring that bell, hit that bell button so that you are notified every time I upload a video on YouTube. Please share this with your friends if you found it useful. Until the next time, goodbye.